Hi everyone and welcome to Unit Pintech channel. This is George Faturos from Innovax. I'm a data scientist working on the development of Pilot 2 in the Infintech project which deals with real-time risk assessment in investment banking. Today we are going to talk about value at risk and its calculation with a historical method. The Python code of this video is available in the Infintech marketplace along with numerous other resources. The links are available in the description to check them out. To begin with, value at risk is a commonly used risk matrix that helps investors, risk managers and traders to understand the risk of loss for their investments. Value at risk tells us how much money we could lose from an investment within a predefined time horizon and the confidence probability. For instance, if the 95% daily VAR of an investment is 100 euros, we expect that there is a 5% ability to lose more than 100 euros from this investment. There are various VAR models that are categorized in three methods. The non-parametric, the parametric and the semi-parametric method. But before elaborating on value at risk, let's analyze the data that we will use for this demonstration. Um, we use the Pandas Data Reader Library to download uh, financial historical data from Yahoo Finance and load them to a data frame. I have randomly selected the stocks of Apple, Facebook, Nvidia, Tesla and Google. Uh, the, historical, um, the historical prices uh, are ranging from um, 2016 until the end of 2021. This data includes open, high, low and cl close and adjusted close daily prices. Uh, however, from those data we rely only on the adjusted uh, close price, uh, which is often used when we are examining historical stock returns. Firstly, we will plot the daily prices to get an idea of the data. However, this plot is quite misleading in understanding the performance of each stock because Google's market price is much higher than the other stocks. To alleviate this issue, we scale our data to log prices. As we can see from the log price plot, um, the Google and Facebook stock uh, has similar performance while NVIDIA and Tesla stocks um, had a higher growth than the others. However, in order to um, perform analysis on time series data, those data should be stationary. A stationary time series has constant properties over time. Therefore, time series with trends or with seasonality are not stationary. Here we can observe that all the time series have an upward trend. The most common technique for making a time series stationary, or at least close to stationary, is to choose its rate of change from the one time step to the next. So instead of analyzing the prices, we will transform them in terms of daily returns. To do that, um, we are applying the percentage change function uh, on the prices data frame. As you can see from the plot of returns after the transformation, the upward trend in the time series was eliminated and now they are moving around zero. This means that time series are closer to sessionality and can be used for forecasting. From the returns uh, data frame, uh, we can use the describe function to have a high level statistical overview of the data. For instance, uh, you can observe that uh, Google and Facebook uh, had uh, equal uh, mean daily return. However, the standard deviation of Facebook stock was uh, quite higher than the Google which means that uh, it is riskier. Uh, so now we can
can move on to the bar calculation uh, and as I said uh, previously today we will talk about historical var. This is the main representative of non-parametric var methods. Such models do not require any assumption about the distribution of the data. Historical var is a simple and computationally efficient model that is still used by many financial institutions. This method assumes that uh, the history will be repeat itself. To calculate it, we use only historical data to draw the empirical distribution of return. Then, based on the given confidence level of R, we obtain the respective quantile of the distribution. Let's take, for example, uh, the Apple stock. Um, here we will plot uh, uh, the distribution of return using 1, 2 and 3 years of historical data. Nin 95 and 99 uh, value at risk are obtained by taking the fifth and the first uh, quantile of the distribution. As you can see, uh, the number of the utilized historical data is an important parameter for the estimation of historical value at risk. More historical data generally uh, means a higher value at risk. Uh, in general, one trading year of data is enough. In the next cell of code, we define the HS function that calculates historical var. Uh, that function is going to take as input the historical return time series the VAR confidence probability symbolized as alpha and the time frame um, of our prediction. The default um, value calculating the daily VAR. The result will be the historical value returns uh, the historical value at risk in returns uh, terms. In case that you want to calculate value at risk for a different time horizon, there is also option for monthly, quarterly, and annual value at risk. In general, if we assume that the returns of an asset are normal, the daily value at risk can be extended to a different time horizon by multiplying the value at risk, uh, the daily value at risk, with the square root uh, of the time horizon. Uh, you could try to extend this function to support weekly value at risk, uh, but keep in mind that the financial week has uh, five days instead of seven. Now let's calculate, for example, the 95% value at risk of 1,000 euros invested capital for its stock and for the available time horizon. To do this, um, we simply call the HS function and multiply it, the result with invested capital. Um, we repeat the same uh, procedure for each time frame and then we simply put the result in a data frame in order to be the results comparable. Good run this cell and now I have the results from the results we can see that uh, the Tesla stock has the um, highest value at risk you can experiment yourself with other probabilities and investment levels so let's complicate things a little bit by calculating now the portfolio value at risk to do this, we need to take into account how the invested capital is split to each stock, which is the weight of each stock on the given portfolio, and secondly, the correlation uh, among these stocks. With this information, we can extend the value at risk of a single stock to portfolio value at risk using this formula. So, based on that and the HS function that we have defined earlier, 
we can calculate the historical VAR portfolio. To this end, um, I defined the portfolio VAR function that in addition to the input of the simpler HS function, it also takes the weights of the given portfolio. It is noted that the input weights should, should have the same length as the, stock, as the stocks of the portfolio and their sum must be equal to 1. In this line of code, we calculate the weighted VAR for each asset, for each asset by multiplying the result of the historical VAR of each stock with the corresponding weight. Next, we calculate the covariance matrix of the input time series using the core function provided by the pandas. And finally, we implement here this formula and we can and, and so we get the portfolio var. Note that the add um, symbol can be used um, in Python for multiplying NumPy, NumPy arrays. So let's test, test this function with a simple example. We will calculate the 95% historical var of 1000 investment in a balanced portfolio. Firstly, we define the required input parameter, parameters, the investment capital, the probability of our prediction, and the weights of the, um, on each stock. Here we simply put 200 euros in each stock. So the weight of each stock is uh, 0 0.2. Uh, in the following lines of code, we repeat uh, our calculation for different time horizon and then we put the result in the already defined data frame. The results imply that we can be 95% sure that uh, our portfolio will not lose more than 26 dot uh, and 30 cents in a day. Feel, feel free to play with different weights and see how value at risk varies. You could also try to download different stocks for experimentation. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you, you learned a lot. And if you really, really like the video, hit the like button. Uh, and please subscribe to the Infintech channel. In the next video, we will calculate value at risk with a parametric model. Stay tuned.